Hey, welcome to 12 Tone. Today we're going to talk about polyrhythms. Up to now, our discussions of rhythm have revolved around adding complexity to a single rhythm. We've used some fancy techniques like syncopation, odd meter, and triplets, but it's always been one underlying pulse. But as you might guess from the topic of this video, it doesn't have to be. What do I mean by that? Well, let's take a look at one of the most popular polyrhythms, the hemiola. A polyrhythm at its most basic is when two parts play a different number of beats in the same amount of time. Check out that hemiola again. And now let's listen to the individual voices. If we listen to just the low drum, we hear a pattern of two beats. But if we listen to just the high one, we hear three beats in the same time. Play them together, and you have a polyrhythm, in this case what we call three against two. Common variations include cutting the faster one in half for three against four, or again for three against eight, but that's still just working with twos and threes, and as we mentioned in our odd meter video, there's no reason to stop there. We can try more complex polyrhythms like four against five, five against six, or even seven against eight. Each pair has its own unique pattern as the parts drift in and out of sync with each other. If you really want, you can even go to larger numbers like, say, 17 against 23, but that's gonna sound really chaotic. Speaking of chaos, there's also no reason you have to stop at two rhythms. In theory, you can add as many as you want. For instance, here's three against four against five. There's no hard limit to how many you can do, although at some point it becomes too taxing for your listener's ear, and just starts to sound like unmetered cacophony, like this 2 against 3 against 5 against 7 against 11 against 13. Yeah, probably don't do that. But one thing you can do is use other rhythmic devices inside your polyrhythms. For instance, in our Odd Accents video we mentioned the clave, a signature rhythmic pattern of Afro-Cuban music. As a refresher, it sounds like this. That's in 4-4, but what if we took it and added a second voice playing three beats in the same time? This is still fundamentally three against four, but the four is a lot more interesting. You do need to be careful with this, though, because if the listener can't identify both sets of beats, then the effect of the polyrhythm is lost. So how do we notate this? Well, there's three ways. First, we can just use compound time signatures, which give us enough room to write everything with standard notation. Our hemiola can be written in 6-8, 3 against 4 takes 12-8, and 4 against 5 might be this. But that's already starting to look pretty ugly, and it gets even worse as the numbers get bigger. No one wants to read that. The second trick is tuplet notation, which we covered back in our triplets video. Here, you just write however many notes you want, then add a bracket and write the number over them. This says that they should be played in the same amount of time it takes you to play the next lowest power of 2, so our hemiola could be this, 4 against 5 is this, and 7 against 8 is this. Heck, even 17 against 23 is easy to write, even if it's hard to listen to. But there's still one more way. Irrational meter. To be honest, you're probably never gonna use this, but it's hilarious and I want to talk about it. Up to now, in all our time signatures, the bottom number has always been a power of 2 because that's how our notation works. We've got whole notes, half notes, quarter notes, and so on. But all it represents is the fraction of a whole note that gets to be a beat, and in theory, that can be any number we want. For instance, to get 4 against 5, we can give one player a bar of 4-4, four, four, divide it into 4 beats each a quarter note long, and the other one a bar of 5-5, five, five, with 5 beats each a fifth of a whole note. They're the same length, but with a different number of beats, which is exactly what we're looking for. Of course, we have no notation for a fifth of a whole note, so we just use quarter notes anyway, the player just counts it differently. It's basically like permanent tuplets. In practice, this is more likely to confuse people than anything, but as a theorist, I love that someone at some point thought it was a good idea. And that's Polyrhythms. Try the exercises, join our mailing list for scans of all our episodes, feel free to suggest future topics in the comments, and keep on rockin'.